and gentlemen, somebody better give this woman back her heart, okay? Because she ain't playing. And, and she needs an operation because she got something in her heart. That's Miss Chalet in my background. Y'all won't be able to hear as loud as I'm able to hear it. But y'all going to be able to hear Miss Chalet. Ladies and gentlemen, I was just talking to my tax person. And I had to explain something to her because they're still not getting it. And I know that many of you are not getting it either. Because you guys don't know what to say to people. So let me tell you. This is what I did so that you guys will understand. The first thing, we're going to go backwards. I'm not going to click on anything so we lose these websites. We're going to go backwards. We're going to go backwards. We're going to go to where it all started. Because she says, I just need to understand, you know, because we're creditors and everything. And if you're going to be a creditor, I just need to understand what position you're coming from. Well, I'm coming from the position of a creditor. No, I didn't actually say that. Because that's not what she was asking. She says, I need to understand what what gives you the right blah 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 so ladies and gentlemen hold on let me see if this is one of those yes that's one of the websites we went to and oh by the way ladies and gentlemen the post office has been giving me a problem okay post office has been giving me a real problem so what i did is i went and i looked up the postmaster because i want to contact that mother i mean uh the postmaster and when i clicked on this it pulled up a document, and here's the document. We're going to get back to the tax in just a second. I just need to show you this to you because I was going to have to do a video on it anyway. So to keep from doing it, they have this document, U.S. Government Manual. Okay, so I'm going to take that because I got to do it. Copy. I'll need the current U.S. Government Manual. Why do I need the U.S. Government Manual? Why? Ladies and gentlemen, because with the U.S. Government Manual, pay attention. This is what it does. I want you to pay attention to this. Gives me the name of all these executives. For the post office, each one of these people is their name, period, middle initial, period, last name. Period. Uh, not period, but at USPS.gov. Okay? So it's a period after each of these. So James, period, A, period, Cohen. He's not there no more. Judicial officer. He's not there no more. Okay, anyway, and watch this. Come on. Okay, so I put current. Should have said 2000. 21 because we're at the end of 2021 so 2021 would have already been done see here it is united states postal service agency but we're looking for the manual oh here goes manual hey manual what up boy all right manual see you later manual okay ladies and gentlemen i gotta make this real quick because i promised somebody um a young man who is in jail in kansas that i would get an address to him because we're going to help him and his people process serve some documents this is what i'm looking for ladies and gentlemen see all these names these are vacancies board of governors how are they gonna have vacancies in the board of governors and here's the secretary okay postmaster they got rid of that one that what's his name hat and here are all the executives Let's see, is he here? Nope, the other one of the people who I was looking for. And what you do is you take all those names and that's how you get their email, okay? Because remember, they don't let you just write someone. They don't let you just call someone. They do a lot of blocking. But now when you call the post office, you call their main number Ask for these people by name, but don't just ask for anybody. Ask for the person who handles what you're looking for. Okay, retail and post office operation, there ain't no need for you to be calling them. Delivery operations, no need for you to be calling that agency. You don't call a vice president just to be calling a vice president. Don't do anything stupid like that because that's stupid. 
And I promise you, I'm not doing anything like that, and I never would. Why? Because now you're abusing the process. Now you're harassing people. Don't do the harassment thing. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the links to everything you need to be able to do to get to the post office. You can't find this on their regular site. Okay? You cannot find this on their regular site. But you can find it here. Okay? So this is how you do that. All right. That was Michelle, everybody. She's got something in her heart. And I don't want this thing to... I got to stop it because it's about to do something I don't want it to do. And now I can't stop it because it's about to do something I don't want it to do. We're going to go with Mickey Howard because she's under new management. It's so hard to get good management these days. So, so very hard. All right. Now let's talk about the taxes. There you go, Mickey. Let everybody know, ladies and gentlemen. I took her initially, the tax agent, I took her to the treasury. You know, that's my routine. What do you mean? Well, whenever you're trying to, how to redeem tax credits, that's the question all of you should be asking. So we're gonna put that as the title for this video. Okay, and that's just gonna be a short title. You know, I don't do short titles. I use up all 100 characters every single time, okay? But the whole issue of this is how to redeem your tax credits. Your tax credits are automatic. Okay, I didn't want that. The club! I'm sorry. This is my song. And she had to turn it down because she's in love under new management, y'all. Hey, Mickey, you know I care about you, woman. All right. What are tax credits? We're not asking what are tax credits. See, I said how to redeem tax credits and it just didn't give it to me. So I had to search. Y'all give me one second. I have to shut the uh, computer screen because I have to put the battery in. My auxiliary battery is down and I've been five hours not plugged in to a power outlet. All right. The first thing we need to do is y'all need to understand this. Federal Reserve notes are not redeemable, but tax credits are redeemable. And when I was talking to her, showing her from the Treasury website that legal tender has no value, but only for what they can buy. Excuse me. In order for you to buy something, in order for you to purchase something, you must give them something of value because that's basic contract law. You must have value in consideration. You can't just give somebody something that's worthless for something that's worth something. Okay, there has to be value consideration. That's what bartering is all about. Okay, so I showed her that, but then I focused on the word redeem. Well, if you can redeem something, so then I said, ah, how to redeem tax credits? That was the question. Well, I thought to be or not to be. No, tax credits are not redeemable tax credits is the thing. So watch this, watch this. It didn't give me what I want, so I had to put redeem tax credits in quotations. The clouds are at my door. I had to tear it down. I'm sorry. A new world of happiness turns me completely around. What, you are Mickey? She's under new management, y'all. And that's the only type of management you need to be on. So I clicked on this because I didn't know what section 44-48.3-8 was all about. I had no idea what country, what state, but I, it was at casetext.com. So because it was at case, pay attention, because it was at casetext.com, I'm like, oh, you better believe I'm going to casetext.com. And so what I do, I clicked on it. And that brought us here. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing as I'm having a conversation with her, I recorded the conversation. I just asked, asked her for permission to put that conversation online. So I'm having a conversation with all of you right now. Okay, so this is Rhode Island. Rhode Island general laws. So it says the amount of the tax credit allowed under this chapter exceeds the taxpayer's total tax liability for the year in which the credit is allowed. 
the amount of such credit that exceeds the taxpayer liability may be carried forward and applied against the taxes imposed in a successive four years or until the credits are used up, okay? Whether, whichever first occurs, get out of there. All right, let's see. Credits allowed to a partnership, limited liability corporation tax, as a partnership or multiple owners of property shall be passed through to the person designated as partner, member, or owner, respectively, pro rata, or pursuant to an executed agreement among such persons designated as partner, member, or owner, documenting the alternate, the alternate distribution method without regards to their sharing of other taxes or economic attributes of such an entity. The Commerce Corporation shall establish, the Commerce Corporation shall establish by regulation the process for assignment and transfer and conveyance of tax credit. The process for assignment, transfer, and conveyance of tax credits. You guys are going to have to understand you can assign tax credits. You can transfer tax credits. You can sell tax credits, conveyance. For the purpose of this chapter, any assignment or sales proceeds received by taxpayers for the assignment or sale of tax credits for the assignment or sale of tax credits allowed pursuant to this section shall be exempt from taxation under Title IV. Look, can we, Mickey, hold on for a second. We're going to let you in, in in a second. Can I explain something to some of you? Is it okay? Ladies and gentlemen, let's break it down just for a second because many of you don't understand. I just did a video the other day telling you how I know things that I shouldn't even know. Everything that I'm reading here, I've been telling you guys this is what we were doing. I'm going to let you know like it is. I didn't have proof of this. I just knew we could do it. That's why when I put it in there, I just, this is the first time you see me do redemption for tax credits. So I put it in and this is what I pulled up. All over this country, it's recognized that you can redeem tax credits. But my redemption is, I want to redeem tax credits to the treasury. That's going to be the next question, but it's not the question now. So, so forgive me for just a moment. As I explained to you, when I said I just knew that we could do this. See, we are a corporation, and we are doing assignments of tax credits. That's what the new SAP packs are all about. We are assigning tax credits for the new SAP pack. The previous SAP packs, we're going to assign tax credits. That's the new people we're bringing in. They're going to help do the paperwork so that we make sure we dot our T's, cross our I's, and hope and pray that we don't die before we wake, you know? That's what we're doing. We have a lot of people who want to ask SACCOM questions about tax credits. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the one overseeing all the email. You don't get to ask SACCOM questions about tax credits. SACCOM is not a tax credit corporation. They do not give tax advice at SACCOM. They're prohibited by law from giving tax advice at SACCOM. So please stop asking SACCOM questions about taxes. SACCOM cannot answer any questions about taxes. That's why I'm very careful as to whether or not the videos are done by Eon or whether or not they're done by SACCOM and placed on the Eon channel. Doesn't matter what us, anybody else in their grandmother or grandfather perceive. The law says that certain things can't happen and I'm going to follow the letter of the law, not your opinion of the law, not your presumption of the law. Okay, let's get back to this. Ladies and gentlemen, you can sell your taxes. I mean, your credits. Well, actually, you can actually sell your taxes too. Everybody knows you can sell your tax return. Man, that's the easiest thing. Companies do it all the time. People have been selling their tax return for years. Oh, come and put no money down and just use your tax return as your down payment. They sell tax returns all the time. Okay, so now that we got that, let's go here to this one because this is where we ended at. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the Adam Moss tax credits. It's adammoss.com. 
I mean, Moss Adams, excuse me, Moss Adams, Moss Adams, and they sell taxes, provide tax credits for certain investments in historic rehabilitation projects, low income housing, and blah, blah, and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Okay. My external battery just said, that's it. You ain't getting no more energy out of me. I'm kaput. So that's how it goes. But I have another one. So we're going to use up its energy. I have three that I can utilize before I have to turn on generators. And the other one, this one's about it low anyway. But I, it gives me an opportunity because it allows me to go ahead and have these conversations with y'all. I mean, this ain't going to be long. But let me go ahead and explain to you about Moss Adams. Not only do they sell their tax credits, they sell them to investors. Ladies and gentlemen, if Moss Adams gets to sell its tax credits, shouldn't you be able to do the same? So I took the tax preparer to the internet. And on her computer, I had her go to these very same places. And I had her put in selling tax credits to investors. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all that's being done by SACOM is that they're selling tax credits to investors. Buy and sell tax credits online. View real-time bids and inventories. Explore events. View highlights. Browse services highlights. And in business since 2007, professional available. Professionals available. Business highlights. Industry serves. Serves offer. Services offered. And career opportunities. Oh, I want an opportunity at a career. Okay, tax breaks for sale, transferable tax credits explained. Ladies and gentlemen, this is at Pew, P-E-W, E as in Edward, W as in Walter, trust, pewtrust.org. Pew, oh, Pew, you smell, homie. Tax breaks for sale, transferable tax credits. Hold on, explain. Let's see if they give us a complete definition or if they give us just the coercory definition. An emotion picture industry is a major recipient of transferable tax credits offered as an economic development tool in states throughout the country. Well, if the motion picture, follow me, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, they, they have to pay a lot of taxes, but how do they reap the benefits? Because they receive millions of dollars in taxes a year. So how do they reap the benefits fully? Okay, let's continue. Tax credits offered as an economic development tool in states throughout the country. When Danny Beagle was a film producer, one of his biggest headaches had nothing to do with pampered actors, finicky directors, or fickle movie going public. Instead, it was finding anyone who would pay a good price for his state tax credits. Over the last decade, states have entered into a fierce competition for the highly mobile movie business. Today, about 30 states offer tax credits to try to lure movie makers. In using these tax credits as an incentive, however, states face a complication. Since most film production companies spend only a few weeks shooting in the state, they don't usually owe much state taxes. States, though, have become adept at providing tax breaks larger than businesses' tax burden to, in effect, make the company's tax burdens a negative number. One way to do this is through transferable tax credits. If the value of the company's credit is higher than its tax liability, it can sell the excess credits to another taxpayer who owes the state taxes. You mean I can sell my tax credits to Benny over there and he owes $100,000 in taxes and they're, they're garnishing his wages? Of course you can. Oh, and I can sell my tax credits to Robert over there who, who owes $150,000 in child support because he ain't never paid a dime in no child support. Yeah, shame on Robert. He's not a deadbeat dad. He ain't just never really had no real job, you know, because Robert is, you know, he ain't too bright. 
No, he'll go out there and anything that can walk, he he yeah, that's what he'll do. You know, because he's one of them. But 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 no, 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 no. I'm not saying nothing bad about Robert because Robert good people, but Robert's stupid. I mean, he he's not too bright. And, and so I can sell my tax credit to Robert. Really? And he can pay off his debt, his taxes. Yeah, he can do that. <laughs> that's pretty good. Man, I learned all this from Eon. Man, for free too. He ain't even charging us for this. Man, that Eon is somebody. Somebody, he well, I was gonna say he's something else, but everybody knows he's something else. <laughs> oh God, he's something molding else. Oh Lordy, he's something else. That mother is. Uh, oh Lord, that fool is something, man. I'm telling you, he's something else. I'm gonna let y'all go on in with this, but that fool is something else, y'all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you can purchase tax credits, if you can sell tax credits, if you can transfer tax credits. Why are all of you bothering me? You can do the exact same research that I'm doing right here. As a matter of fact, no, no, stop with your ignorance. Because I am actually getting fed up with people asking me questions about taxes when I'm not the tax guy. I'm only showing you what your possibilities are. I'm showing you what sites I'm going to. Ladies and gentlemen, so go to the same sites. Go to the same site. Okay, now, whew, got that off my chest. Oh, man, that was just a heavy load. That was just a very heavy load. So this is what I want you to do, okay? Watch this. Let's do this because some of y'all don't understand, so we're going to do y'all a favor. Watch this. Now, pay attention. We already did. Transferable tax credits here. See, tax credits, tax credit. That's all this is about. Total tax liability. Taxpayers total tax liability. If the amount of the taxpayers, uh, okay, so we did that right there. Now watch this. Transferable tax credits. We live in a credit-based system, ladies and gentlemen. It's all credit. Remember, they borrow money from the people. It is the people's full faith in credit that they're borrowing monies from. So the people have credit. It's an economy. Oh, by the way, let's see. I, I think I closed it. Dag nabbit, I closed it. The website, what, um, yeah, I closed it. Dag nabbit. What's this? Yep, it's closed. I was going to take you back to the Treasury website. You know where the Treasury talks about Federal Reserve notes have no value? But look at the last word of that paragraph. It says economy. Because that's what they created. In an unpublished advisory and letter ruling, the feature that distinguishes tax credits that are property from those that are not is whether a transferee has purchased the credits for value. If you want them to be property, you purchase them for value. A transferee has purchased a credit for value and the credit is property in the transferee's hand rather than a factor in a calculation of tax due. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you need to understand this is you, when you buy a SAP pack, you're not guaranteed it until the end, until maturity, but you're putting in it for value, to, for value, okay? There you go. And when the transferable credit, transferable credit is in fact transferred to another taxpayer for value, the transaction is a sell and purchase of property for the purpose of this section. The reasoning is sparse, but IRS counsel apparently began from the proposition that a tax credit is a reduction of liability rather than an acquisition of wealth. We are going after the wealth. Have all of you not understood that? So do me a favor. Look up these cases, people. Discover something. Give me something to help the people. I don't have time to look up all of this. But all I'm doing is this video right here. And no, you notice that I just put this in here. I didn't look it up before. Okay? But this is one case I'm going to demand 
That's right, you heard me. This is 2018. So this is now. This is not last 18, 5 billion years ago. This is now. So this stuff applies now. So what I'm going to do, you see the name right there. You see the case right there. I'm going to take the whole case. I'm going I'm to select all. Wait a minute. Come on now. Give me the whole thing. It's taking its time, y'all. Wait a minute. There you go. I need to see this up here. PDF and print and everything. I'm, I'm a, you better believe I'm going to save this PDF. Me and PDF. Okay. What I'm trying to say is here's your proof on how you can transfer your tax credits. All you have to do is document your tax credits. Many of you have not documented your tax credits. I've been telling you to document your tax credits. It is necessary. And you document it by showing the history of where they come from. You don't have to give all of the details. You just have to give a little bit of a tidbit of a detail. Okay? That's all you have to do. All you have to do. And once you do that, life is so great. Now, mind you, you guys have all of these uh, agents who are telling you, no, you can't do that. No, that don't make no sense. That's because they're looking at it the same way. Well, let's show it to you. Let's show you how the tax agents are looking at it because that's the way the IRS looks at it. See, BETC is a non-refundable tax credit allowed to certain owners. Well, we don't want a non-refundable tax credit. But notice this. This is the one we want. We want the top one right there. That one right there. I want you to pay attention to what's being said here. A transferee, that's you. No, you're the transferer. Well, no, you're the transferee. You're the receiving the tax credit. The transferer would be me. I'm transferring my credits to you. The transferee has purchased. What you doing? Oh, this is, <laughs> that's the uh, document, but I have to go back here. The transferee has purchased the transferable tax credits. And because he's purchased the transferable tax credits for value and the credit is property in the transferee's hand rather than a factor of in the calculation of tax dues. See, this is the difference between refundable tax credits and non-refundable tax credits. How can I prove that? If and when a transferable tax credit is in fact transferred to another taxpayer for value, the transaction of the sale and the purchase of the property for purposes of this section, the reason is sparse, but the IRS counsel apparently began from the proposition that a tax credit is a reduction in liability rather than an accumulation of wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, they have just killed this argument. A tax credit is not a reduction. It is an accumulation of wealth when it is purchased because it becomes property. It becomes property. Oh, and by the way, Oregon Tax Court, Magistrate Division, Income Tax. Guess what? Does this apply to the federal level? Of course it does. But the IRS counsel, see, the IRS was involved. They're not involved on a local level. They're involved on a federal level. They are with the federal government under the United States Treasury, not under a state's treasury, but the United States Treasury. Okay? For that reason, the grant of a, the grant, we call our tax credits, you guys have heard me say it, grant funds. That's what it's been called from day one. Since 2012, they were called grant funds because this was the idea since 2012. <sighs> the grant to the transferable tax credit by the state is not a payment of cash or property. That would require its inclusion in the receipt gross income. The tax credit becomes property when it is purchased for value, after which point the use of the tax credit by the purchaser is not merely, you know what, let's, yeah, we're going to go see more. 
Man, I met Seymour. Man, Seymour, that fool was always getting in trouble. But he was all right, you know. Okay. The credit becomes property when it is purchased for value, after which point the use of the credit by the purchaser is not merely a reduction in liability. It is a transfer of property to the state in satisfaction of a tax liability. So you'll be transferring property and you can take this language with you. I don't know what IRS CCA uh, 2011 4-7024 says, but you know what? We're going to find out. It won't let me do it that way, y'all. It's going to take me here. And I don't want it to take me here. Now I got to go to that section. Sedgwick, 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 Sedgwick. Sandwich, get on over here, Sandwich. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm having one of those days where I's a fool, you's a fool. I've been dealing with the post office for five hours today while doing this stuff in the background. They've been literally sending me through the motions. See, motion for some reason. They've been sending me through the motions. Why? because they can. I tell them, no, I've already spoke to that office and they transfer me right back. I email and say, I've already spoke to that office and they transfer me right back. <laughs> uh, so now I'm going to the corporate office and you see all of those names, everybody's gonna get an email from me. Because I, look, when you tell people to leave you alone and they don't understand, I just, I called a company up today and I told the idiot who was on the phone because it's a company that we pay for services. And when I called him up, I said, no, there's no need for you to go into the account because you're not doing anything in the account. We're not changing anything in the account. You're going to put things the way they're supposed to be. So I don't need to give you all that stupid information. Well, sir, I need to have, I said, well, let me speak to your supervisor. So she puts the supervisor on the line and he wants to be on a conference call. And I said, excuse me, what are you doing? Sir, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh -uh, excuse me. My question is, what are you doing? Did you ask me for my permission to put me on a conference call? What type of world do you think this is that you can do whatever you feel like? You don't get to just put me on a conference call because you felt like you had some authority this morning. Fool, I don't work for you. That was my conversation with him. He just caught me at the wrong time because he did that because he thought he could. Because he was going to set me straight, so to speak. He won't do it no more. The owner of a facility may transfer tax credits for the facility in exchange for cash payments equal to the present value of the tax credit. Now, here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. No, you don't have to give currency an equal to the present value of the tax credit. Okay, this is Oregon revised statute that says that. We're not doing this under Oregon revised statute. Okay. Oh, by the way, there are other ways around that. I can't tell it to you because I don't want you guys going buck wild. I know I know many of you are going to go try to find out what it is, and it's going to be a while. Because it took my people, when I told them about it, it took them three years to find it. So, well, I know I know you think you're better than they were. Yeah, sure you are. But go right ahead. I'm going to let you be better. Okay. The issue in this case is whether the reduction of tax liability from use of the purchase of the BETC is income to the extent that it exceeds BETC's purchase price. Ooh, that's right. See, that it extends the purchase price subject to addition, subtractions, and modifications not pertinent here. Taxable income in Oregon is equal to the taxable income as defined in the Internal Revenue Code. That is gross income minus deduction. See, the IRC, I Internal Revenue Code. Insofar as practical, the court follows federal case law and administrative law when interpreting the IRC. On summary judgment, the court grants relief where there is no genuine issue of any material fact and the moving party is entitled to prevail as a matter of law. The tax court rules, TCR, are applicable as a guide pursuant to the preface, uh, not preface, preface, of the tax court rules magistrate division. Gross income means all the income from whatever source derived 
with specific inclusions and exclusions. Now, guess what? You know what the exclusion is? <laughs> your cost of living. That's not part of your gross income because you've already spent it. So it's not income. The fact that you've spent it, it doesn't constitute income. Income is anything you bring over your cost of living. Sorry. Go, go and read IRC 61. Just go, go read it. That's why it says with specific inclusions and exclusions. Cost of living. You cannot be charged for the mere price of living, breathing. Go same, same, same state. Oregon. Fisher versus Redfield versus Fisher. Sorry. All right, let's continue. However, as commentators have noted, commentators, why are we worried about stupid commentators? Anyway, the word income is not defined in the IRC. Oh, wait a minute. Income is not defined in IRC? Exactly, because they can't. And guess what? Here's your proof that income is not defined in the IRC. You got it in this case. In the early days of the federal income tax, there were early days. In the early days of federal income tax, the United States Supreme Court defined income as the gains derived from capital, from labor, or from both combined. Well, gains, well, you cannot be taxed on your labor. You cannot be taxed on your labor. That's your labor. How can the government put an excise on your right to work? How can they put an excise on your labor? You're not in conjunction with the government. You don't have a contract with the government to say, I am your slave. And whatever I earn, you get to take part of it. You get to take a piece of my pie. You can do that with business because you're engaged in commerce, but you can't do that with the cost of living. So this labor and that labor are not the same thing. That's why it's from labor. Are from both combined, laying special emphasis on the necessities that income be severed from the capital in order to be derived from it. They mean they have to separate it? Income has to be separated from capital? Oh, that makes so sense. Gains derived from capital. So, income, defined income as gain derived from capital. So, income has to be severed severed, separated from capital. But I thought income was capital. See, income is capital. No, ladies and gentlemen, income is the gain, the addition that comes from the capital in order to be derived from it. Now, while McCumber, cucumber, excuse me, McCumber, has never been expressly overruled. The court in recent years has preferred its broader formulation of the commissioner and commissioner versus Glenshaw, in which gross income was found where there were instances of undeniable accession of wealth. Yes, because see, it is income because it's no longer the cost of living. Anything over your cost of living is income. And this is what they're saying, accession to wealth clearly realize and over which the taxpayer have complete domination. They got dominion over their own income. Unless it's an accession to wealth. Relying on Glenshaw class, the court has stated that the definition of gross income found in the RC section extends broadly to all economic gains not otherwise exempt, exempt, exempt. Just told you what the exemptions are. Despite the categorical language of banks, the IRC definition of income does not in fact include all economic benefits lacking a specific exemption. Again, they exclude, pay attention, banks from documenting income, but they also do you as well if you know how to do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, cost of living. Anything that's part of the cost of living is not taxable. Although utility gain, economic benefits from the customers, advanced deposits, deposits were not taxable on receipts because utility did not complete, did not have complete dominion over them. They're saying because the utilities, and this is this is really interesting. 
because the utilities that they were supplying to the customers, the utilities companies don't have complete dominion over it because they can't control electricity. They can't have dominion over electricity because they don't own the electricity. Interesting, ain't it? Likewise, as theorists have noted, income from rent is not imputed to the homeowner who lives in their own houses, nor is income from services received imputed to those who perform housework for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Nor is income services received imputed to those who perform housework for themselves. That's right. You can pay yourself to do work on your own house. Sole proprietors. Sole proprietors. Sole proprietors. The distinction between economic gain and income is not clear. It may be that the definition of one that includes the other is secular. Among the economic benefits not included in gross income are reduction in tax liabilities by use of tax credits. Reduction of tax liabilities by use of a taxpayer who offsets income using tax credits has received no money or other income within the meaning of the Internal Revenue Code. Now, I want you to pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to learn something. Those of you who are going through mortgages, you're going to learn something. I want you to pay attention because many of you are not going to pay attention. And you're not going to look up this case that is being referred to here. Pay attention because this is in extremely important. A taxpayer who offsets income using a tax credit has received no money or other income within the meaning of the Internal Revenue Code. So let me ask you a question. Why are you paying taxes on the 1099-Cs if the bank just forgave the debt? You haven't received any money. You haven't received any money. So why are you paying on that debt? Why are you paying taxes? You cannot receive any money or tax on income within the meaning of the IRC. Go look up the case. There it is right there. Go look up the case. Non-refundable tax credits have no value in themselves. Non-refundable tax credits have no value in themselves. Rather, they affect the statutory decrease of the tax of tax liability for each individual taxpayer. Non-refundable tax credits. Thus, the general rule is that using a tax credit to offset tax liability is not an accession of wealth. The general rule is using a tax credit to offset tax liability is not an accession of wealth. All of you who sent those tax agents to me, this is their thinking that you're only trying to offset tax liability. I'm not trying to offset nobody's tax liability. This is a purchase. Wait, how is it a purchase if you were just carrying forward the tax credit? Because this is from a debt. This is supposed to be for wealth. That's why I forgave it after 180 days. Ladies and gentlemen, let me see if I still have that up. Uh, it's the last thing I will show you. That's Redfield versus Fisher. That's this case right here. Individuals and like corporations. What are you doing? Oh, I wasn't trying to do that. Uh-uh. Put you back where you belong. Hold on. Hold on. Get back up here. Get that and stay there. Don't don't leave. Okay? Don't you dare leave again. All right. Oh, I had to put my Howard back on. Mickey. It did it again, y'all. It did it. I told him don't do it. Didn't you hear me tell him not to do it again? And it did it again. Get back over here and do it again and see what happens to you. I will throw you out the window like that SBC, SBC commercial would sprint. The individual, pay attention, y'all. The individual, unlike the corporation, cannot be taxed for the mere privilege of existing. You have the right to live. The corporation is an artificial entity. The corporation is an artificial entity. The courts are an artificial entity. The judicial officers are an artificial entity. Showed you that in the video the other day, where they're created by statute, which means they're creatures of the state. They owe their existence and chartered power to the state. But the individual's right to live and to own property are natural rights for the enjoyment 
of which the an excise or a tax cannot be imposed. You cannot be taxed on your right to live. I got a right to live, mom. Okay, let's go to the next one because I'm looking for something in particular. In particular, in particular. That was new management, y'all. And I think, um, yeah, we can go to Milestone. They're going to be caring about something. Transferable tax credits as property. This is what we're looking for. The Fourth Circuit considered whether transferable state tax credits were property in the hands of the transferee in Virginia's Historic Tax Credit Fund, 2001 LP, Virginia Historic, versus Commissioner. This was 2011. The court applied the bundle of sticks, an analysis identifying the relevant property rights as the right to use the property to receive income produced by it and to exclude it, others from it. The court also identified as relevant the breadth of the control of the taxpayer that they could exercise over their own property and whether the right in question was deemed value. It's property, so property always has value. Ladies and gentlemen, whether the right, pay attention, whether the right in question was valuable. All of your rights are valuable. Your due process right is a valuable right. It's property. Your right to live, your right to life, your inalienable right, those are property, people. The courts know this. Shall you continue? I shall. Finally, the court summarized a footnote of die, die, as identifying transferability as relevant, although not essential, to finding a property taxes. You don't, you don't necessarily have to transfer them. They don't have to be transferable in order for them to be deemed property. The fact that you get to carry them forward means that they are property. They're yours to do exactly that with it. The court in Virginia Historic found that the transfer of state tax credits from the partnership to a partner in exchange for a contribution was a transfer of property, analyzing the property rights bundled into the Virginia tax credit. It found that they had pecuniary value. What? Pecuniary value? Because the purchaser were willing to pay for them. Not that they paid the full value amount, but the fact that they were willing to pay for the credits. The court also found that the taxpayers' exercise of proprietary control over the credits, meaning they could exclude others from using the credits and were free to keep and or pass along the credits to a partner if they saw fit. This is what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. We do have proprietary control over our credits. Like I said, you're going to have to go over this case. Some of you are not going to be able to read it the way you see me reading it because you're not going to gather it. You're going to try to read way too much into it. And some of you are not going to read enough into it. The court said particular attention or paid particular, I said, said, paid particular attention to the issue of transferability. Although direct sell and or resell of Virginia tax credits was prohibited by law, Virginia law had a partnership allocation provision that permitted state tax credits allocated to a partnership to be divided among the partners as the partners and shareholders mutually agree. Ladies and gentlemen, every state has that, which is why we call all of our set packers members so that we can do exactly the same thing. So you can only have a certain amount of members. There's a limit. We are aware of this, and we have been conforming with that from the very beginning. Okay? Now, transferable prerequisite of property status of tax credit. Here's the part that I'm going to suggest many of you focus on. Considering Virginia's historic court reasoning, it appears the distinctive right that made the Virginia tax credit property was their transferability. The credits pecuniary value arose from willingness of others to pay to have them transferred. As this court has observed in the context of property valuation, 
an underlying assumption of uh, market value is that the market will only pay for those benefits it will receive if tax benefits are limited to the first owner and not recaptured when the property is transferred such benefits will not enter into the market for consideration so you need value where's the value where's value and you need consideration value and consideration go hand in hand you cannot be separated that's why you see he said value up here and he said market value and he said market consideration you don't need market value or market consideration but value and consideration has to be there okay tax credits only have value on the market if they can be transferred to a buyer uh, additionally the virginia historic court found proprietary control over the credits hinged on the freedom of the holder to keep or pass along the credit to partners that it as it's all fit while the uh, abilities of the use of the credits and exclude others from using them were certainly essential property rights those rights do not differentiate the virginia tax credit from non-transferable tax credits whose use would not generate income See, they're both non-transferable tax credit. is still property, the same as transferable tax credit. That's what they're saying. That's just the breakdown in a nutshell. The nuts is a shell and the shell is a nuts. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Given the importance of transferability, the Virginia historic analysis, it might be said that the transferability is essential to the finding of a tax credit as property. That would not contradict Dry. In Dry, the Supreme Court held that in the interest on a trust was property that an interest in a trust was property for the purpose of federal tax lien statute in a footnote the court recognized that state law rights that have punctuary value and are transferable make up property subject to lien uh, noting that the lower court had held interest in non-transferable spendthrift trusts. That's the trust where a parent gives it to a child and the child is not competent and they assign a trustee to manage the child and take care of the child and all that stuff. Okay, trust was also property subject to a lien. The court stated that it did not mean to suggest that the transferability is essential for the existence of property. So it doesn't necessarily have to be transferable in order to be property. Transferability is what makes transferable tax credits property. Can be seen by considering non-transferable tax credits. Because if it's non-transferable, what's a non-transferable tax credit? I think some of you guys need to do some research on a non-transferable tax credit. You don't mind? It is tautological. That don't make no sense. That transferable tax credits differ from non transferable tax credits in their transferability. Yet the use of non transferable tax credits is not disposition of property and does not result in the gains of the dealings of property. If it was, the use of such credits would require recognition of gain, a result forbidden by whatever that case is as well as the revenue ruling on 79-315. A transferable tax credit is not property. Oh, a non-transferable tax credit is not property for the purpose of the IRC. The conclusion is drawn here where the transferable tax credit is considered as property. It is because it is transferable. Okay, so there you go. Non-transferable, transferable credits where the courts can't decide. Which one has value? We do know non-transferable tax credits do have value, even though they claim they don't, because you get to reduce your tax liability, and your tax liability is dollar for dollar. Your tax liability is dollar for dollar. That's what creates the value. Somebody needs to rebut these idiots. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's me bringing the tax credit to you, okay? The... Right to transfer a tax credit implies a loss of property status. It's a loss of property because you transferred it. Okay? It's a property right. Look, this conclusion raises the question of whether a transferable tax credit are property in the hands of the original holder. Such a finding would 
be consistent with the statement of the United States Tax Court in Temple that a grant of state tax credits creates a cognizable property right in these credits for the recipient of those credits. Okay, just that simple. All right, ladies and gentlemen, wasn't planning on doing an hour, but you guys needed this information because this lets you know that tax credits are viable and you are able to transfer tax credits. You are able to receive a refund on tax credit and you're able to redeem, redeem, redeem tax credit. Okay, got to go. So I hope everything goes well with y'all. Hope y'all take care. I hope y'all got it like that. And if you don't got it like that, I hope you eventually get it like that. But other than that, you're going to get it. Got to go. Goodbye.